Hi, my name is Dan Siegel, and I'm the executive director of the Mindsight Institute in Santa Monica, California. To talk about the perspective from the field I work in, which is called interpersonal neurobiology, and how that can help us understand the processes of being mindful, of being compassionate, which combined is my understanding of what is meant by the term be kindful or to develop kindfulness. Now, in the world I work in, we actually dive deeply into all the different sciences. So we don't come from a meditation background. We actually try to take, for example, the fields of mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, psychology, linguistics, sociology, anthropology, and everything in between, and say, what would happen if you combined all the sciences into one framework? What would that be like? What would you see as the nature of our understanding of being human, of the nature of reality? So from that field, interpersonal neurobiology, we can draw then on things like asking a question, what is the mind? or saying, what is a healthy mind? In doing that, we basically start with the premise that any word we use should have a clear definition. If it doesn't have a definition, then we should be clear this is a word we're using which doesn't have a shared understanding among many people. Now, the word mind is just such a word. In fact, in the Oxford dictionary of the mind, the entry mind has as the first statement, a vague term. And so in our field, interpersonal neurobiology, we address this by saying, how does your mental life, which in descriptions, we say is your feelings, your emotions, your mood, your thoughts, your ideas, your concepts, your memories, which can come as images and all sorts of sensory experiences, and all that we, of course, describe as mental life. Now, in looking at those things, you actually can't really say exactly either what they are or what they share in common. Now, you can say, well, Dan, they share in common, they're a part of the mind, and that's right. And then if I said, well, what is the mind? As I've asked many, many people, you would be surprised to find that, for example, of 100,000 mental health professionals, professionals in fields such as my own, psychiatry, or psychology, or social work, or psychiatric nursing, or educational, or movement therapy. All of us are a part of the broad field of mental health, and yet over 95% of mental health professionals around this planet have never been given even a single lecture on what the mind is. Now, for me, that was very disturbing when I first came to realize that. And of course, if you're a professional in a field called mental health and you don't define the mental, you can't define the health. Because the health of what? Well, something you haven't defined, a vague term. So this was so disturbing to me that it has driven me in a path to try to say, could we offer a working definition of what mind is and look at things, for example, like the brain and how the brain relates to mind? Are they just words, meaning the mind is a term for what many neuroscientists say is simply what the brain does. That is, mind is a synonym for brain activity. And that's a very common statement. In fact, Hippocrates said that 2,500 years ago. The father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, was setting the stage for a modern conceptualization of mind as something you might locate by pointing to your head. Well, William James, the father of modern psychology, in 1890, in a book called The Principles of Psychology, said it was basically so obvious, so given that mind was what the brain does, that he would just go on and posit that and show all the support for it. Now, there's no question about it. The brain and its activity influence our feelings, our thoughts, 
and our memories and all the rest that we say has to do with mental life. So, of course, the brain is important. But is mind just a synonym for brain? And if it is, why don't we just drop the term since no one seems to be defining it, not just in mental health, but even the field of education. Over 95% of kindergarten through 12th grade teachers never been given a definition of the mind, even though they'll say, what I try to do with my students in class is help them develop their mind. I've even asked chair people of departments of psychology, psychiatry, anthropology, and even philosophy, looking at philosophy of mind, and you might be surprised to find that there are no definitions of mind in those academic fields either. So we have this amazing moment in our humanity that we have a term mind, which has not differing definitions, but actually no definition short of brain activity. So let's try to unpeel the layers of this onion, if you will, and try to see what's at the core of the idea of mind. And the reason to do this is if you're looking at something called kindfulness, which is some idea that the mind of one person is compassionate toward itself or compassionate toward another, or the idea of mindfulness, and there's that word mind again, that tricky word. Well, if mindfulness means you're full of your mind, well, it'd be worth the discussion, wouldn't it, to say, what is that? So let's dive into that and see where it takes us. So welcome to our journey into the nature of mind. <laughs> 